uh, thank you for taking the time for joining us today. This is going to be short and uh, practical as, as, as much as possible. Uh, my name is Martina Piperno. I am assistant professor of Italian at Durham University. I am one of the book reviews editors who are uh, here. Uh, and uh, I suggest we um, we start with a round of presentations, starting with uh, the, um, the, 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 the book reviews editor and the editors of Italian studies, and then uh, to all of you who joined so that we, like, we, we start to know each other. So maybe Christina, do you want to introduce yourself? Yes, sorry, I think I was on mute. Uh, so, well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, very nice to see you here. My name is Cristina Massacesi. I'm an associate professor teaching at University College London in the School of European Cultures, uh, Languages, Cultures and Society. And my um, areas of expertise are film studies and sequential art. And for Italian studies, I'm the reviews editor for um, everything that relates to cultural studies. Hello, my name is uh, Nicolò Crisafi. I am a research and teaching fellow at uh, Pembroke College, Cambridge, and uh, I am uh, the pre-modern uh, reviewer, uh, meaning a book, re um, book reviewer, meaning that I'm in charge of uh, all of the reviews up until the 1700s, which is uh, massive. And uh, my interests are mainly in uh, medieval Italian literature, uh, Dante, Boccaccio, and trying to get over uh, writing about Petrarch. I really don't like him. Silvia, do you want to? Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Silvia Ross, and I'm senior lecturer in um, the Department of Italian at University College Cork. And I, uh, along with Charlotte and Heather Webb, are this, we're co senior co editors of the journal. So we oversee uh, article submissions primarily but we also have oversight of book reviews of, of all the content and um i deal primarily with post seven post 1700 submissions which is also a, a very wide range of submissions and just so you know just in terms of the way the journal is structured i'm not sure how much um the book reviews editors will go go into this but it, that we publish four issues a year three of which are um <clears throat> a mixture of articles pre and post 1700 one is a special issue on italian cultural studies that charlotte will say more about but also among those four issues there's always one that is a special issue as well that's themed so yeah Okay. Hello, everybody. I'm Charlotte Ross. I am reader in gender, sexuality and cultural studies in the Department of Modern Languages at the University of Birmingham. And along with Sylvia and Heather, I am one of the senior co-editors of the journal. So as Sylvia said, I uh, look after the cultural studies submission. So there's one issue a year which usually comes out in November. Um, which is devoted to cultural studies uh, from any period. Um, and so I'm uh, interested in those particular submissions. Um, Serena, do you want to be to say something about yourself and the, your yeah. role in the society too? Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Serena. I'm a junior research fellow in Italian at the University of Oxford. I work on Gadda and also sometimes on Dante. And uh, I'm a, an early career academic representative at the Society for Italian Studies together with Guido Bartolini. And uh, we've worked with Silvia and also now with uh, Chiara Giuliani at UCC uh, to organize uh, workshops uh, about uh, employability and uh, in general, everything that can be useful for uh, postdocs. And in the society, there are also postgraduate representatives and uh, we work also with them. Claudia? Yes, formally, I'm, I am one of the postgraduate representatives, although I'm no longer really because I'm now I'm at UCD. Um, my name is Claudia de la Casa. I'm uh, officially now I'm part of the English department here, uh, University College Dublin, but um, my research is in comparative literature, so I still work in uh, Italian studies. That's my background, and I still do that. My main interests are um, connected to the environmental humanities and eco-criticism, uh, mainly applied to contemporary um, Italian um, prose and, and poetry. Thanks, Claudia. Enrica? 
Hello everyone, my name is Enrica Leidi. I'm probably the younger for sure of my academic careers uh, since uh, I'm still a master's student at the University of Bologna, but uh, I'm applying for a PhD. I'm trying to apply for a PhD at least. Um, my main interest is um, uh, literary uh, theory and comparative literature in reference to 19th century culture. And uh, at the moment uh, I'm working uh, especially on Leopardi. And uh, I've recently worked uh, also in the field of uh, ecocritics. Hi, everyone. I'm Gennaro Ambrosino, and I'm a first year PhD student at the University of Warwick. Uh, my project focuses on a late 18th century, early 19th century, and it's called Archaeology and the Unconscious. What I do is try to find links between the field of the archaeology and uh, pre psychoanalysis, uh, and like, like finding uh, common metaphors and discursive practices between these two fields. Thanks, Jess. Hello everyone, my name is Jessica Hampton, <laughs> sorry, um, I'm a final year PhD student at the University of Liverpool doing sociolinguistics of Italy and I'm also recent, I've also recently joined the University of Cambridge as a research associate uh, doing something quite different though, uh, yeah so it's great to be here today, thank you. Thank you. And Rebecca has sent me a message saying that um, her microphone doesn't work. So um, just um, uh, I think most, most of us know her uh, already, but she is a postdoctoral researcher and lecturer at Oxford, um, focusing particularly, if I remember correctly, on Dante and, and the Middle Ages. Um, uh, thank you all for being here uh, again, and thank you for introducing yourself. So. Um, what has been said, the uh, Italian Studies is the journal of the Society for Italian Studies, which is a society, I am saying that for the, for particularly for those of you uh, who are, have just started or are starting uh, the journey, research journey in the UK, so particularly for Enrique and Gennaro, um, is the body that uh, tries to uh, keep together all the efforts in the UK and Ireland, this is important, um, to, to, um, to foster and to, and to make uh, uh, Italian studies. Um, it is advisable, if you aren't a member of the society, it's advisable that you sign up, uh, the, the fee is very, very low, and uh, it's um, basically a um, uh, a, pl a place uh, more or less uh, virtual and real uh, to to meet to, uh, to 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 make acquaintances to find people that uh, do research similar to your uh, to your projects or completely different and to 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 be part of a, of a wider research community of course. Uh, Italian Studies is the one of the journals, uh, is the journal of the society, but it's one of the journals in Italian Studies in the UK and in the Anglophone world. And here is uh, most of the editorial uh, of the editorial team is here uh, for you to uh, today to answer your questions. Um, um, we. Um, I mean, for the for the introductory part, I think we have uh, we have covered everything, and we are we have a um, Nicola. Do you want to, to circulate the Google form? Yeah, I'm sharing a Google a link to a Google form, and I guess if we're on YouTube, then we'll put it in the description below, uh, uh, where we're collecting uh, people's uh, kind of uh, details and uh, research interests. Uh, 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 so that we may be able to contact you uh, in the future if you're interested in being commissioned uh, interviews after the workshop. Uh, so you'll find it in the uh, chat right now. Okay, so that's that was all for the introductory part. Maybe, Cristina, do you want to take up from here? Yes, of course. Um, so basically, um, what I would like to cover is very briefly the the process that would be that would go from the commission to the publication of the review. So <clears throat> obviously, the aim of this workshop today uh, is to create a pool of reviewers based on their you know new research interests. So there are two ways that we would like uh, this process to work. So it's either um, as editors, reviews, editors contacting potential reviewers, uh, proposing a book for review, 
or if you come across a book that you believe could be interesting and would you know deserve a review in Italian studies, then you can also propose that to us and we'll either commission it or not after you know just course of consulting with each other. Uh, so once we have these kind of pool of reviewers, this means that you would have priority over other potential reviewers. And it will give you a chance to sort of, you know, kind of uh, practice your writing, practice practice writing reviews. But Nic Nicola will say more about that in um, in a few minutes. So basically, what the process is, to put it very briefly, um, let's say that we um, offer you a book to review. You accept. So we send you the book that is yours to keep, then obviously, depending on the publisher, uh, the book could be a hard copy or a digital copy. So it's, you know, it really varies um, according to the publishing company. Uh, you would have some time to read the book, then write the review of the book. Um, according to the topic of the book, you would have to liaise directly with the relevant reviews editor. So let's say it's a cultural studies book, everything will be done uh by getting in touch directly with me uh so once you have the review ready you would send it to me i will do a first round of editing uh give you some feedback and hopefully either accept the review with minor corrections or perhaps ask you to do some rewriting some um, editing uh, so once that part is done and we accept your review We'll move to uh, the stage of having the proofs ready and then after that the review will be published so um, how long the process takes from start to finish it's actually very variable so um, we would have to kind of discuss it ad hoc with each reviewer and you know for um, and on a kind of case by case sort of basis uh, the reviews will be published um, online in the digital version of the journal on a sort of rolling basis. So once your review is ready, it's quite likely that it will be published rather quickly online. And then of course, there are also the special issues that um, will need contributions for the review sections. And so all the important deadlines will be discussed, as I said before, on sort of ad hoc basis with each reviewer. And if you have questions, perhaps we can collect all the questions at the end, I don't know, or... Martina, what do you say, Nicolò? I think we can keep it informal. So yeah. I mean, if you have any questions at any point, yeah. uh, I just wanted to add like a really, really small thing about the commissioning. Uh, sometimes we have a prompt from, an, from a publisher, but we don't have the book. Like it happened recently with Claudia. Uh, like we have, or maybe the author comes forward, but he doesn't, or she or she doesn't have the, the, the copy of the book. So the, it takes an extra step from the publisher to to um, to contact to to to, to provide a, a copy either digital or physical to the reviewer, but not in every case we have those copies. Yeah. Okay, um, it, this is because of, of, of the copyright which uh, protects the authors, um, and it's absolutely normal. It it only takes a little patience to to navigate. Yes. Sorry, very good point that I forgot to mention that. So yeah, that, that would be the, the process. So it's pretty straightforward and streamlined, nothing too complicated. So I think Nicolò. Um, thank you, Cristina. It's your moment. So I'll just be looking uh, more closely as to how to write a review. And I think uh, this can be divided into two main points, uh, which are uh, one is a matter of style of, uh, uh, kind of how to format and how to style the review, and the other one is about the review's uh, content. So in terms of style, I'll put in the chat uh, actually the style guidelines for the uh, publisher, uh, which is Taylor and Francis, and it follows uh, their guidelines. It's quite, uh, there's a variety of different answers to questions that have to do more with style. Uh, and they're more uh, kind of straightforward. I have to say that the link of what I've placed is mostly has to do with articles. So obviously when it comes to word counts, uh, uh, just follow what I'm going to say next as opposed to uh, the advice that you find there. But uh, the general uh, ideas about formatting will still apply. So the first issue is how long should a review be? And I think uh, we are having uh, a limit around a thousand words. And I'm saying around because some books will be uh, 
uh, normal and will require a little more, and that's subject to some. There is some flexibility there. It's something that we'd ask you to get in touch and ask and negotiate if you need a little more uh, or a little uh, less. All of this can be uh, discussed uh, within reason, and this uh, excludes something that I will show you at the end, which is a kind of a paratext, which is the publication details at the top of the review. Uh, it excludes the author's uh, details, the name and affiliation uh, and address that are at the bottom of uh, the review. It would be grateful if you could include the, the word count once uh, once you submit it, just to give us an idea, this will not be uh, published. Uh, so when it comes to the style, uh, the publisher asks to refer to their uh, guidelines, as I said, uh, when preparing your uh, review, rather than to follow already published uh, articles or a sample copy. This is what they say, I think it is very useful to uh, have a copy just uh, for reference. So I'm going to pull one up. Uh, hopefully the screen will uh, uh, work. A screen share will work, let's see. So um, this, uh, this review is one of the latest that we published. And, uh, uh, and we, as you see from uh, here, um, it's the page the page numbers you see here, page number two, it refers to the online edition because this is published as part of the latest uh, uh, latest uh, articles uh, section of the website and has not yet been published uh, as part of the hard copy uh, number. Uh, so that uh, we will, I mean, but it will eventually get published in that, but this is one of the advantages that in the latest issues, you, re you have it, you know, very quickly, and it's a way for authors to see it published already and being able to refer to it. Now, I just want to say a, a few more things about style. Once uh, you submit it to us, we will kind of help you also in formatting. It doesn't have to be uh, kind of uh, uh, perfect. Obviously, the more the 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 more refined it is, the less work uh, has to go into it. The quicker we can go with the process. The key thing really is to have some consistency. Um, we're using British spelling, we're using the single uh, quotations, except when it's for a quotation within a quotation, and uh, we're not using really indented quotations because it's just a thousand words, there's not much space uh, for that. And when it comes to um, kind of uh, references, we're following the style of the MHRA uh, reference uh, guide. When you're submitting uh, the the review the, the reviews, it makes sense that if you could kind of submit them in Word format as opposed to a PDF, and that allows the kind of editing process to occur more easily. But what I wanted to show you here was uh, focusing uh, more on the paratext, which I was referring to. And this is simply the uh, details of the publication that you'll be uh, reviewing. It's not something that we are adding. It's something that comes with the, uh, should come with the review. Obviously, as you see, there's the title uh, by uh, the author, place of publication, the publisher, the year, uh, the number of pages of the publication, and occasionally with uh, also uh, added pages that you don't see here in this example for the introduction, the price, whether it's a hardback or not, and the uh, ISBN. Uh, at the end of it, that's where you have your details. And, and in this case, uh, that of Rebecca Riley, you say you have the, your affiliation, your institutional affiliation in italics at the bottom, and an email address. Uh, which kind of encourages the spirit of the society of having an intellectual exchange. So your details, your institutional details are there uh, so that uh, somebody might contact you in case uh, they're interested or uh, they're disagreeing wildly uh, with your take, which is still hopefully in the spirit of intellectual exchange. Uh, when it comes to the context of the review, uh, come to the content, sorry, uh, to kind of give you a sense of what we're shooting for, I'd say, um, there might be some hard and fast rules, but uh, we uh, will not really be prescriptive because if you go on the um, on the on the on Italian studies and compare different reviews, you will notice that there is quite a variety of uh, of ways of doing this one thing. That's the book review. It's not something that's monolithic. Of course, the primary purpose is to of the review is to get a sense of the content of the book reviewed. Uh, and that can be, you know, also a description of its structure, uh, the way it's articulated in various chapters. Obviously, um, the main argument, it's a, over, uh, kind of a synthesized understanding of what the main argument and the main contributions are, its methodology, and, and how it fits in the current landscape of uh, uh, the, the, the scholarship, if you are obviously familiar uh, with it. 
the aim is to provide this overarching view of the work as a whole, often organized in chapters, but not necessarily. In the example that you have here, for instance, uh, uh, the, the author doesn't really go into chapters in a very um, uh, kind of a systematic way. But I'll pull up another uh, review with my edits in an earlier phase, one that we haven't uh, yet uh, published that the author kindly agreed to uh, share so that you can see what it looks like once uh, we receive it uh, and the edits that we would be uh, doing. As you see, my kind of this review arrived in an excellent form. It's one uh, that uh, I kind of have, I've written comments to the side, but they're very scant because it was very uh, uh, curated. This is something that I, uh, I just noted on something that I thought was uh, uh, was giving a specific view of uh, the Decameron. And I was wondering whether that was subconscious or not. So I just queried the author with regards to that. Uh, there's something uh, simple here. And just for clarity, I divided something into sentences, uh, changed something in italic, uh, and, um, and, and uh, kind of clarified that this is, was the author speaking in this case. And eventually just uh, made sure that the author's details were uh, formatted in the correct way. But that was pretty light touch intervention on our part. Um, generally, it's uh, it's uh, it's uh, you I mean you will get feedback from us uh, if there is more uh, kind of necessary interventions. Again, those are also negotiated because it will be your publication in the end. So we want to make sure that you feel that it reflects you. And now I want to say hey, just one one thing that. Uh, of course, the secondary purpose of, of, uh, of our reviews to provide a more personal take on the book that you'll be reviewing. I think it does really help. I think that's what's really valuable of getting a sense of where the reader slightly more subjectively, but always kind of fairly and uh, honestly and kindly uh, stands. There's a balance so between be struck between uh, describing the content of the work while giving your own take on it. Uh, these days, I think, uh, you know, open books are available online already with an abstract. So uh, just a pure description of content is not what we're looking for, because uh, there are other means by which one can understand the content, uh, can find out the content uh, of a book. I think it would be a missed opportunity to hear the reviewer's uh, take. Personally, I really appreciate to hear whether something has may or may not have convinced you, whether uh, there's something that you may have liked, uh, there were noteworthy choices in what was omitted, for instance, or what was included. Uh, and uh, the review that I showed you before uh, by Becky Riley was also considering the question of future directions uh, after that publication in which the scholarship could proceed, uh, considering that, uh, 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 that publication. Um, of course, can this personal take is where a certain delicacy is appreciated. Uh, personally, I used to write uh, more polemically earlier in my career. Only some of it was the product of youthly passion. Uh, quite a bit of it was, I think, my own ignorance that with time I uh, found out. But I think gradually I've also become more aware of the fact that regardless of my own uh, specific opinions on any given topic, uh, this is the fruit of someone's labor that one is uh, addressing or interacting with. And so over many days and many nights, and as a result, I think I have developed a greater appreciation for intellectual kindness when writing uh, about others. This, however, doesn't mean that uh, you should, you know, say something that you don't believe. I'm just saying that kindness isn't incompatible with critique, but I hope can complements it. Um, there are, of course, well-known formulas if you disagree with something, uh, kind of from, of course, reported speech of neutrally writing what the author argues or interprets uh, or reads in a specific way to phrasing such as, you know, cleverly like, some readers might take issue with the fact that, or, you know, the text raises important questions when it comes to this and that, different interpretations remain possible, and, uh, and so on. I think that's where you exercise uh, uh, your own judgment. Of course, we want that this is something that reflects what you think. Uh, on the other hand, uh, just uh, a little bit of uh, empathy uh, is, is always uh, good. I think I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with this. I'm, if there are any questions uh, in the meantime. Can I ask you something? Sure. Uh, I didn't hear very well, like uh, 1,000 words you said, right? That's right. OK. Yeah. And also footnotes, like because um, I, I can see here there are a few footnotes, but um, maybe you want them to kept, be kept to a minimum, I guess. 
Yeah, we're trying to keep them to a minimum. Uh, a review that's coming for uh, for the next issue, for instance, has one. Uh, uh, and kind of in theory with reviews, we, we try not to have them and to have them just in the body uh, of, uh, of the text. Um, that's a good question, yeah, thank you. Okay, thank you. Cool. Um, shall we, I think we are, uh, we're, we're, we're done with this main core. We wanted to ask whether our postgraduate representative, uh, representatives may have uh, something to add because uh, this workshop, of course, is mostly addressed to uh, postgraduates and early career uh, researchers. So maybe there's something uh, that uh, we've missed out or some special interests or experiences. Uh, Serena. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Ole. It was very useful uh, to listen to this. And uh, yeah, I think uh, it's uh, it's important uh, for early career researchers to engage with the book reviews. It was uh, it was useful for me because you engage in a dialogue, uh, of course, always with kindness, as you said. And it's useful also for uh, book authors. And uh, and yes, I, I can't think of anything more to say. Uh, but uh, if uh, yes, if you want to. Uh, in, to, to write reviews, of course, get in touch with the uh, book reviews editors, but uh, Guido Bartolini and I can, uh, can also, like, uh, we, you can get in touch with us if you have any other concerns, uh, uh, and, uh, any other ideas uh, about, uh, about uh, how to, uh, to collaborate with, uh, with uh, Italian studies. And, uh, and yes, I, I can think of anything, uh, maybe. <laughs> yeah. for, for now, thank you. I may just add very quickly that this meeting is part of a of an attempt uh, from the editorial board as a whole to create a stronger link with the society itself and to um, do more to make this the a community working together uh, and um, giving each other being part of a wider conversation really and also would like to encourage particularly the youngest among us. Uh, to to I mean uh, book reviews are an essential part of the academic life because they give uh, not only visibility to the to the to the work but also to the re reviewer positioning the reviewer within a, this wider conversation that you as early careers are uh, are trying to join so uh, it is it is um, a very good exercise in academic writing both in Italian and English and uh, a good way to make yourself visible, not only in Italian studies as a field, but in your sub field, in your specific field, and to start uh, conversations at a distance with academics you may want to work with, or you already work with, or want to work with in the future. Uh, in, and in that regard, the, the Taylor and Francis uh, website also provides details on the publications, on the metrics of how of if it's been viewed or downloaded. So that can actually give you immediate feedback as to you know whether people are actually engaging with the uh, with the review or maybe you know of course coming also from interest in the book. Uh, so it, it shows the impact that that's having. And maybe Silvia and Charlotte want to add something from our senior editors. Uh, yeah, I might come in there. So no, I just wanted to thank um, Christina, Nicolò and Martina for, for all their really helpful advice and giving, I think, a, a very clear picture of the process and what's expected. So I think that's really helpful. Um, a couple of things. Yeah, the online publication is certainly a really positive aspect uh, because it does mean that the review appears quite quickly and you don't have to wait for one of the four annual issues to come out. And as I think Nicolò was just saying, you can see the metrics and the metrics for the journal in as much as these things uh, should be taken with a huge degree of seriousness in the humanities, but in as much as one does, the metrics are very good. Um, there's this score called the journal citation indicator, and we do very well. We're ranked 36 out of 401 in the humanities category. So the journal is, it's read, it will, you know, your work will get a certain amount of visibility if you, if you publish, um, reviews or articles with the journal. Um, we really are keen to encourage more people to to review in general. So that's that's partly why this is happening today. As Martina was explaining, we're looking for a community of reviewers of 
of ECRs, but not only, obviously reviewers can come from every stage of, of their academic career. Um, so I suppose one thing just to bear in mind that you you would want a certain critical distance if you're reviewing someone's book. So I wouldn't review your best friend's book. Could create problems down the road for your friendship or not. But or I wouldn't review, you know, your supervisor's book or something like that. So you want a little bit of critical distance where you can get it. Um, obviously, the community of Italianists in these islands is isn't huge. But um, but I, just to, just to be mindful of those kinds of questions. And if you're not sure, then that's where you ask the, the reviews editors, you know, do you think this is a good idea if I review this or not? Um, so those those are my main pieces of advice. But, you know, we really hope that people will follow up on the invitation and and uh, and start putting fingers to keyboard and, and reviewing. I don't know, Charlotte, did you want to say something? As well? I, I don't have a lot to add to that. I think there's been a lot of really helpful information and advice here. I just want to reiterate that, yes, writing reviews is a really important part of uh, ongoing academic debates. If a book isn't reviewed, uh, it, um, it sometimes feels like you're writing sort of into a void. You want to have somebody come back and, and continue the conversation with you. And it is a really excellent way to get some experience of publishing in a journal uh, uh, and writing that kind of piece. So uh, it's, it's, it's a really great way to, to start out as well as to, to, to carry on being part of uh, an academic community. Um, we are particularly keen to encourage more people reviewing in the area of cultural studies. So uh, uh, if that's something that you'd like to do, please do it um, uh, or uh, encourage other researchers who you know uh, uh, to, to come forward and, and be part of that because uh, it's uh, uh, an important field within Italian studies that, um, that we really want to support. Um, so thanks for everybody. Thank you. Do you have any questions for us? I have a short question. Um, you don't have a, a list of titles you would you would like to cover, do you? Um, or like, I was just wondering. That, of, yeah, of I was course. just wondering whether like potential reviewers have access to a list of books that you wish to cover or not. We we have discussed about a list and. But we decided it's well, it's a lot of work to keep uh, such a document updated and avoid uh, problems with that. So no, not really. We do have um, we do have um, publishers contacting us directly, and we have authors contacting us directly. And what we would like to do, since it's impossible for us to review every single entry, to uh, have a pool of potential reviewers di divided more or less by research areas to forward these uh, invitations. So obviously, it's not a requirement or anything, but it's an opportunity uh, because that means that the author or the publisher or both are willing to provide a copy of, of that work and make it available and visible. Um, so yeah, but if you have something that you would like to review, uh, it's um, it, we're more than happy to consider or to discuss uh, uh, the review option or to find an alternative or any, anything really. I might just add one more thing that just occurred to me as well, because as people might, may have seen that sample review was in English, but you can write in English or in Italian, and you should feel free to write in the one that comes to you best, really, um, that you can produce the most academic sounding prose, I think. So, you know, we encourage submissions in, in either language. It's not, there isn't a sort of hierarchy of one or the other. That's true, the articles as well. So, um, so yeah, just to bear that in mind also. Sometimes uh, it happens that <laughs> we spend a lot of time correcting English in the English mistakes rather than, you know, refinement of academic, <laughs> of academic language. Uh, so I think that, I mean, it's all from us. So um, we just wanted to make ourselves known and visible and uh, yeah, to create this 
conversation, but if you or your colleagues uh, have want to know more or couldn't make it today, as I said, the video would be made available somehow and um, we also have a collective uh, email address, uh, which I would um, put I would put it in, in the chat in a second, uh, which you can use to address us as as, as three uh, as book reviews editor collectively, uh, and preferably use that because otherwise things can get lost in our uh, inboxes, uh, in our regular inboxes. Um, so yeah, that I mean that that's it. But uh, obviously, it, um, it doesn't necessarily end here. So if, if anyone uh, yeah, in your universities, in your field, uh, want, want to join the conversation later, we will be happy to uh, to to have them. This is the collective <clears throat> the collective email address in the chat. Yeah. Sorry, there's a slash at the end. There shouldn't be there, but yeah. That's that's the one. And by the way, if um, if we don't respond immediately, uh, that, that that's because we, we all juggle different things and different uh, tasks every day, and uh, sometimes it can take a little while to to respond. For example, I'm saying this to Serena, who I think is uh, is expecting a, a, a reply from the from the reviewers. Uh, still, but um, yeah, we, we are on it. <laughs> we're trying to wait our making. We're doing our best. Mi ha risposto Nicolò. I actually already replied. <laughs> okay, so maybe it's time for the saluti, and uh, thank you for taking the time for being here today. Thank, thank you, you very much. much. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank thank you very much. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Bye -bye. thank you for organizing us. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Silvia. Mm. Can I stop you for sure. a second? Will we stop the recording, maybe? Yes, yeah. maybe. Okay.